Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be making a sheet load of clear cards. I hope you'll stick around and see how I'm going to make them. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel and you think you might like to download my sheet load of cards printable for free, make sure to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. When I introduced the October 2020 sheet load of cards, I shared with you the first set I had made. And I decided for that set to use heavyweight vellum as my card base. I had thought about using clear cardstock and I had a subscriber, Judy, who asked me if you could use clear cards like this as well. So I thought that I would come back and make a set using clear cardstock because this is definitely a great sketch to use that on. If you end up having any questions about the clear cardstock, I did do a Q&A recently about what I use, and I will link that video in the description box below and put it as an end card at the end of this video. Now, if I don't answer a question that you might still have, make sure to leave those in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Now, if you would like to download the October 2020 sheet load of cards, I will also include a link to the video that tells you how to do that. This is free, as always, to my subscribers here on YouTube. Before I get started on the process, I thought I would share with you a little about the supplies that I'm going to use today. I will, of course, be using my sheet load printable. For my sentiments, I'm going to be using the stamp set that came with the August 2019 Paper Pumpkin. This was a fall themed kit and I thought with the papers I chose for today, this would work great. If you're interested in knowing more about how I store my Paper Pumpkin kits in these little envelopes, I will have this video linked in the description box below. Per the instructions, I got out two pieces of coordinating cardstock for my cards, and I chose an off-white, and I chose, it's kind of a, a shimmery gold cardstock. It is really beautiful. I'm not sure if you're able to see that shine in the camera, but I thought this would add a nice touch. The pattern papers I chose for today are from a Michaels Hot Buy fall paper pad from probably last year or the year before. I chose this pretty leaf background and then this text background as well. And then of course it might be hard to see, but I did get out some clear cardstock that I'll be cutting and folding for the card bases. Once I start the process, I will go to a voiceover, so make sure if I leave you with any questions that you leave those in the comment section below. Let's get crafty. To get started on today's cards, I'm going to be cutting and folding my clear cardstock into card bases. These cards will be a top fold on the skinny edge, so I cut each sheet of my clear cardstock to four and a quarter inches wide and leave the length at 11 inches. Now this clear cardstock can just be folded with your hand. I do usually bring in a bone folder though and just reinforce that fold. I continue to cut the cardstock until I have eight clear card bases. Once I had those card bases done, I then cut down my pattern paper per the instructions on the printable. I'm not going to go over a lot of this in the video because I do already have another process video this month and all of the dimensions are in the free download. Now this next part is a little bit different. Because these are clear card bases, I do need some cardstock pieces to go on the inside of my card for the personal message. What I did was I just grabbed out some off-white cardstock from my stash, just some scraps, and I cut those down until I had eight pieces that are just slightly smaller than the gold cardstock piece on the front. That way it's hidden from the front and I still have a spot inside to write my personal message. 
Now that all of the pieces are cut, I can start putting these cards together. The first thing I did was map the off-white pieces that I just talked to you about that are going to go on the inside with the large piece of pattern paper. This guide adhesive adhered to the back and then I placed this centered on the inside. Now with the clear cardstock, you do want to be careful before you push it down completely because it does kind of stick easily to that clear cardstock and is a little hard to get up. So just remember if you try this to just place it down gently until you get it centered and then go ahead and press that down all the way. I get asked frequently what I do to hide the adhesive on the back of the clear cardstock and honestly I just leave it like it is. I figure that nobody that I'm sending these cards to is going to judge me on that, that they're going to be more interested in the card and the note that I'm sending them. So I don't try to hide it in any way, but if that is something that bothers you, you could always put extra pieces of pattern paper or cardstock on the back of the front and the back of the back cover of the clear card base to cover that adhesive up. Before I can decorate the front of my clear cards, I need to get my stamping done. And before I can do that stamping, I need to go ahead and get my matted square of pattern paper adhered to the top center of the gold piece of cardstock. That way I'm going to know what area I have on the bottom of that gold cardstock piece to stamp my sentiment. So here I am just matting each of those square pattern paper pieces with the off-white cardstock and then I'm going to place those onto the gold cardstock. Now it's time to do the stamping. From the stamp set I'm going to be using thankful for friends like you and grateful for family like you. And because I am mass producing and I just want to set the stamps up one time, I did go ahead and pull out my Misty. Once I had my layered pieces set up in the Misty, just by putting one in each corner of it, I got out my stamps and made sure that those were centered and were looking well on the open area at the bottom of each. Now all I have to do is pick those stamps up with the door of my Misty and then I can ink them up at one time and then get two pieces stamped. Now you will notice a jump here in just a minute. That's because my camera shut off and I didn't know about it. But I did ink up and stamp all eight of those layered pieces that will go on the front. Once all of that stamping was complete, I added adhesive to the back of each one of those and placed it on the front of the card. I did make sure that when the card was closed that the gold piece of cardstock would cover up the off-white piece on the inside. I just continued this same process until I had all eight cards with the fronts on them now. I wanted to add a little bit more sparkle to my cards, but not really any more dimension. So I brought in my gold and clear glitter dots from Elizabeth Craft Designs, and I placed three on each of the card fronts out around my stamped area. You'll see here that when I turn it to the side, it doesn't really add anything that's going to cost extra postage. I love that about these little clear dots. Now, unfortunately, these are currently out of stock, but I do have them linked below. So if you want to check them out to see if they are in stock, that link is in the description box. Now, since I have my bling on there, I could have called these cards finished, but I decided that they needed just a little something extra. So off camera, I cut eight of these leaf dies from the gold cardstock and from the off white. And I'm gonna be layering those up together to place on the card fronts. When I go to layer these, I am going to flip the off white copy so it's sitting opposite. This just helps each of those layers stand out from the other. The first thing I do is add a small strip of art glitter glue to the off white stem and then I place my gold die cut on top of that trying to line up those stems as best as I can. 
Once I have those together, I set them to the side and put them under a stamp block just to help that dry nicely. I continued this same process until I had eight little leaf bundles. And I have to say that I think this added such a nice little extra touch and all it took was just a little bit of extra cardstock. Once all of those were dry, I used the same art glitter glue to adhere these little clusters to the front of the card. I just put a few dots of the adhesive on the back of the die cuts and I placed that on my card front. I did move the leaves back and forth on the card fronts depending if it was the text pattern paper on the front or the leaf pattern paper. Now you might have seen me pull that bottle stop out of my glue bottle and I will tell you that that little thing has been worth its weight in gold. It has saved me so many times from losing my stopper and having my glue dry out. If you're interested in learning more about that, I will link the YouTuber below who makes and sells those. I would definitely recommend checking her out and maybe buying one. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's clear sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget that if you want to download the October 2020 printable for free so you can make similar cards, I will link the video in the description box below that gives you all of those directions. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.